In this video, we are going to talk about chart orientation. That is, how you will find your way around these airway charts. And I have quite a few over here. These charts have some things in common, and there are a few small differences. The first thing we want to do when we get a chart is to make sure that we have the chart for the right place or the right area. And of course, that would be looking at the title and the general map of that particular place that you're interested in having more detail. For example, this is a chart for Europe, Middle East, South Asia, United States, and another East Asia chart. These are all en route charts. Now after we find a chart that covers our area of operation, we can sort of get a rough picture of where that is by looking at the map. We've talked earlier about the chart index, which is the bold boxes or the boxes that have a bold outline and they basically tell us that these charts are for this part of the world but specifically the charts are for these two areas okay so we've got chart one and chart two basically chart one is on that side of, a, of the map and chart two is on the other side and this applies to different areas charts as well for example, this one. I have 45 and 46, which if we look at the chart index, 45 is on that side of the chart and 46 is on that side of the chart. So whichever area is inside the chart index, for example, in this case, I've got Albany and Boston. If I'm looking for Albany and Boston, then of course I would be interested in chart number 46, which opens in that direction. This video is on chart orientation, so I won't be talking about effective dates that has been covered. Once I turn the chart over to the side that I want, a lot of maps actually also go by area. So if you're looking for the area of Albany or Windsor or Boston, then these charts actually open up into panels. So Albany would be in the first panel over here, and at the bottom of the chart, you can see that this is panel 1. So I have got Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. As labeled uh, at the top and at the bottom. Most charts are oriented in the same way. For example, here I have uh, a chart for Europe. And same thing, the major cities are found in the associated panel. But there's actually a quicker way of finding the city. And that's where the front panel might be very useful. In this particular chart, just below communications, you can also see a list of airports. Let's find Amsterdam. So we go down the list and here it actually says P8A8B. Amsterdam can be found on panel 8A and 8B. If we look at Panel 8, which actually says Paris here. And the reason I know to look at Paris is because Paris is actually found on panel 8. And that's where uh, Amsterdam is found for some reason. So I'm going to follow the instructions and I go to panel 8. And you can see at the top of the chart that says A and B. So this is panel A and B. And at the bottom of the chart, correspondingly, I'll find. C and D, or Charlie and Delta. So that's A and B. And at the bottom of the chart, I'm going to find C and D. And we were told, you're going to find Amsterdam in A and B. So it's either this panel or that panel, but the area of Amsterdam is found in both of these panels. So let's look for Amsterdam. 
and you can see straight away here that says Amsterdam Netherlands and Amsterdam is actually found here other things that can help with orientation Let's have a look at this chart. If we open it up, you will find a distance ratio scale, which I can use to transfer distances using a protractor or a ruler, and these vertical and horizontal green lines. If you look at this one real close, you can see that this one says North 43, and this one says West 074 and basically that's the latitude and longitude of this particular junction that you see over here and that translates into a GPS coordinate. On this chart you can also see a magnetic compass needle and these lines all radiate out they are actually magnetic radials leading out from this particular navigation aid and this one is a magnetic radial of 039 and a magnetic radial of 86 now these magnetic radials don't take into account local variation and any deviation that you have for a particular aircraft so at the flight planning stage uh, we actually don't worry about uh, compass deviation because there's no way to calculate that since we don't know which aeroplane is actually going to be flying this particular route and each aeroplane has a slightly different magnetic deviation if any. This chart is constructed using a Lambert conformal conic projection. Lambert projections are very commonly used in airways charts because a straight line drawn on charts using this type of projection most closely approximate a great circle track. So it would basically be the shortest distance between two points following the curvature of the planet yeah, while well, we're transferring a curved surface onto a flat piece of paper or an electronic chart. And a good way to show that would be, let's say, picking, let's pick this magnetic radio. And as we know, a great circle track uh, isn't constant. It's actually, well, if you want to look at it as constant, you can say it's a constant curve, which means the track would be constantly changing and the magnetic heading would be constantly changing. This radial of 086 leading out from this navigation aid all the way to the next navigation aid on a straight line. Well, 086, the reciprocal of 086 is actually not 269. So you can see that's not a 180 degree about turn. So this straight line that's shown on the chart in reality is actually a slight curve. Now this is the shortest distance between these two navigation aids flown over the curvature of the planet. Another feature that helps us with orientation is these little winged symbols that we find in a less congested area or less dense area of the chart that actually points to true north. If we look at the top of this chart, a uh, bold shaded blue line, LO44, and that basically signifies where another chart overlaps this particular one. And this chart is chart 46, but the chart that we find on the top here that joins to chart 46 is chart LO44. And if we look at the, the map index, we can see that chart 44 actually does overlap the top of chart 46. Okay? However, this map only has um, areas 45 and 46, the ones in a bold black border. Measuring distances. Distances on the airway charts are measured in nautical miles. However, since these charts are projections and one of the disadvantages of having a flat chart 
as compared to the curved surface of the planet is that some detail is always lost when we make that conversion. The Lambert conformal conic projection is the best type of projection to use uh, if we want to keep shapes and angles between points on the chart as close to real world as possible. So with this type of chart, angles tend to be accurate and shapes tend to be accurate, which is precisely why we use it for navigation. Distances can be measured using the scale and a tool such as maybe a pair of dividers or a compass or you could use a ruler or you could use a piece of paper to transfer to the scale. However, to get a more accurate measure of distances between places and when we are using an on route chart generally we fly point to point so we won't be measuring distances from one point to the middle of nowhere we know where we want to go we want to fly airways and the distances of all these airways or sections within the airway these distances are actually marked out for us and these are calculated distances so if we try to measure these distances on the chart using the provided scale you're going to find that it's not as accurate as the number that is provided for us. An example would be um, this particular segment from this navigation aid on a magnetic radial of 039 to the next navigation aid is 92 miles and 92 miles it's understood that that distance is in nautical miles. However, the distance for this segment from this navigation aid to the first waypoint that is 36 nautical miles. So you, got, you have two distances here. Yeah, the one in this box is distance between navigation aids and this number over here is distance to the next waypoint or this is known as a segment distance.